<laughs> oh, we're live. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mr. Mysteries Explained. I can talk. I really can. Liar. <laughs> so we are doing something different. Uh, so you need to bear with us, though, because this is our first live YouTube Mysteries Explained. But there are a lot of changes coming to Mysteries Explained, which we will explain later on. But right now, say hi, Will. Hello. All right, so as I said, we are live at the Slaughterhouse and we are going to be talking to different people who work here and we are gonna be showing you around a little bit. Now, the Slaughterhouse was featured on that famous Ghost Adventures TV show. Oh, it went right to being live, how funny. Okay, we had a little bit of a hiccup there for a minute. Uh, we lost internet, but now we are connected again, so hopefully that hiccup will not happen again. Hiccup? Hiccup, a hiccup. But we are at a haunted location, so you never know what is going to happen. So be aware. <laughs> All right, so we actually have some people in this room with us already. So I guess we'll go ahead and start asking some questions. What do you think? Sure. All questions. right. I'm warning you all, you're on camera now. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to introduce yourselves I'm Annie. I'm Annie. okay and uh, let us know some of your experiences here at the slaughterhouse right, okay, <laughs> okay. So, so my initial experience here um, even like four years ago when we had this room the TV room it's in four of the rooms um, whenever I go in there I just literally could see the hair on my arm stand up and it was really just all around weird and um but as i started to work here like uh, alone away from people i started to experience like real kind of uh, terrifying things like there was a night where i was painting uh walls and i had somebody else there um but I just felt my back start burning like really, really bad. And I, I had to take my shirt off. And I thought it was the light, the spotlight I had on, on us. But um, as soon as I took my shirt off and my uh, other friend Chance had looked at my back, there was clear claw marks just all the way down my back. And it was so bad that it was almost like a cat scratch where like the skin raises up. And um, it was there all night. And then, um, when I'm upstairs in my haunt, like I'll hear things move around, or music will start, or cameras will go out, or I'll just, I can feel the energy, and it always feels like somebody's there next to me, or watching me, or like breathing down my neck, and those are just like the basics of like the things that I experience here. Right. All right, now, Ray. <laughs> I heard you were one, the one on Ghost Adventures. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I haven't, I think the only physical evidence, I guess you could say, that I've actually seen people was obviously the photo that was in the, the video. But besides that, it's like, it's like, I mean, I'm saying, I'll hear things, um, I'll get scratches out of nowhere, um, especially in boiler room. There'd be times I'll be, um, we have tires in there that are stacked, stacked up on each other. And I'll see, like, it's like this, I don't even, it's not a normal size guy, it's like over six foot. And like if he's, cause we have um, like a maze, like if he's like trying to like crawl under like each of the like, pieces of wood and like, he's like creaking and I'd like, Ask if there's anyone there, but there's no one, there's no one ever been there. Um, and then I just feel a lot of things. Yeah. I know. And what about you? <laughs> um, I haven't had a lot of experiences, but I have a tendency, like when I do, it's like feeling someone watching me when there's no one else around, or like seeing a shadow out of the corner of your eye as you're turning a corner. And stuff like that is just, it makes your hair stand on it and it makes you really nervous to be here. Um, I still don't really like being inside some of the parts <laughs> of the haunt because it just makes me feel nervous. 
Um, other than that, it's like stuff being moved that can't have seen, like there's no one here to move it or it doesn't logically, like where it got moved to doesn't make any sense for any of us to move it or like lights that won't work or like in boiler room, all of us, whether it's your phone or a flashlight or any, any type of flashlight you take in there, it goes out. It doesn't matter whose phone it is, it doesn't matter whose flashlight, how many batteries, time to change the batteries, they'll just flicker and go out all the time. Now, I'm sure probably one of the main questions that is asked of all of you is, if it's so haunted here, why do you keep coming back and working here then? Um, I choose to believe that the ghosts that we have here like to play tricks, and they're not here to harm us. They just want us to know that they are here. Um, and it's, we get a good laugh out of it a lot. Like, um, during our first weekend, one of the new boiler room haunt manager, AJ, was in his haunt and his radio got ripped off of him and there was no one around and he wasn't near any machinery. It just got ripped off and his <laughs> antenna went missing. And we all like to say it was, his it was his initiation. Like that was, he had to deal with it in order to deserve to run that haunt. So it's, I like to think it's tricks and not like threatening. Yeah, just like how we're here to have fun. And that, it's like almost an addiction. They're, that's how they have fun is messing with us because we're always here and they are, they're always here that they can be, but, um... Now, what about the scratches, would you call that? Uh, that, okay, so... <laughs> when, I was, when I was doing that, uh, was, um... Uh, near one of our most active spots, and so we'll have, like, on and off, kind of more, um, I wouldn't say violent, but more, like, devious fun from them I guess and and the the spirit that it's a little more mean only likes to pick on girls like girls will have bruises out of nowhere whether they're acting or not and I have long hair so I always like to think maybe <laughs> I, I had it like in a ponytail so I thought maybe they came up from behind me and they're like oh a girl and just like scratched me but I wasn't like terrified from that or anything I was just like it just wants oh, you right. to know Yeah, it just wants right. you to know that it's there so that we're we're always conscious that their things too, like just like this isn't just our space uh, anymore, you know. All right. So the girls get picked on the most. Why do you think that is? <laughs> I don't I don't really know. I I think a part of it is with being a haunted house there's this idea that girls get scared easier. I think that's a part of it, is that, like, as an actor, you get taught, like, go for the people in the middle, and most of the time, girls, like, to stay in the middle of the group just because, like, they feel safer. <laughs> that's what I, I think, do. <laughs> I think that's a part of it, is that the ghosts see that girls get scared a little easier, and so they're, like, they're easier to freak out, and that's the point, is they're trying to play around and trick people and make a joke of it. All right. So have you guys ever been really scared to where you've wanted to run out of the building too? Oh, or? she and I, there's a video of us running out of the building. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that, I've run out before. It's only happened to me like twice where I've gotten that freaked out. But, and every time I always just have to like sit and be like, okay, it's just, it's a shadow, I'm fine. Well, <laughs> it was only scary because after we watched the cameras, the cameras went black. Oh, that too. While we were inside. We had cameras in the room. We both walked inside the room, we were a little, like, a little we already hesitant. freaked ourselves out. When we walked in, we both saw, like, a shadow, we were freaked out, the cameras completely blacked out, and all you saw was us running outside. So, <laughs> that was a little weird. Um, I think it's with me and then, obviously, um, one of the other actors here. Um, in Boiler Room, whenever it's dark, and we accidentally leave something in there, we usually leave walk over there and then as soon as we get it, we're like, we're like <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be in there because it, like when it gets dark in there it's it's like really it's, it's pitch black right all right well what about you <laughs> well as far as my experience i've only actually had one experience and I think it's because, as I tell everybody, my radio doesn't get that challenge. I've been coming here since before we even had Slaughterhouse, just coming into the building and then working on props. 10, 11 o'clock at night, by myself, most of the lights off. And I was in the control room working on the cameras, I think, and 
all of a sudden a light comes on over, I mean, there's no one here, all the way over on one of the work ta tables. And I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. So walk over to it, look at it. It's an emergency light. It's not plugged into anything. It's just sitting there, and it's gone on for no apparent reason. <laughs> I don't know that we had ever plugged it in to charge it up or anything. It's just sitting there, and it's glowing. And I went, huh, that's kind of weird. <laughs> And it continued to work. I never got any weird vibes. I've talked to plenty of people who work here who have had all sorts of things happen to them. Uh, on one time, they were in the boiler room, again, of course. And I think it was when we were doing like a ghost adventures tour or something like that, paranormal. And I guess a piece of metal, just random metal, not that big, skated across the floor towards the group. There's nobody on the other side at least not the other side of the room. <laughs> and so it wasn't somebody in the group had kicked it. No, right. It just came shooting across the floor at it. And they went, hmm, that's kind of interesting. Maybe we should go into another room. <laughs> Why leave the room when you're getting activity? <laughs> that's what I don't understand. because uh, we get scared. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't go chasing after it, huh? Uh, <laughs> we're just like, okay, you scared. You're in your room now. Be back later. <laughs> All right, so how about this? How about we do a little bit of a tour and go see that boiler room yeah. that everyone keeps talking about? All right, let's do that. So if you're just now tuning in, we are live at the slaughterhouse. Hello. The behind the scenes look of the slaughterhouse here. Now you guys are already open for the we don't reach like that. <laughs> It's really dark. Wow, you can't even see in front so, of you. See how, I see just how it my, just turned it off? My camera, or like I had my flashlight on and it went off right now. <laughs> so as things like that I always got, happen, huh? <laughs> so do you like guys like to come in here when you're not working or no? Um, no. I can't say what I have. I, can't say that I've never I don't had enjoy coming in here. <laughs> other than working. Okay. You don't have props on, right? No. I was going to say, if you have props on, please warn me because I'm not one to go through these no. things. <laughs> so, All right. This is the boiler room. And this seems to be the one with the most activity, then, right? Yes. And then we have the lower boiler room. Most activity then, right? Yes. Yeah. And then, then we, we have the lower boiler room as well, which we call the engine room. And then there. And there. That's where people tend to either get scratched or bruises. Kind of yeah. weird. And I was painting right outside of that room. So. Yeah. So. Um, this right here, this green thing, though, is where on Ghost Adventures, they um, have the picture of Ray, along right. with our other actor, Chyler. Um, with the shadow in the picture, that's where that was taken. Do you still get up there? Uh, that's not much anymore. <laughs> I don't really like to. Anymore. I don't act in here anymore, but I don't, when I'm in here, I try to like, stay away from this area. Do you? That's why I'm, yeah, I'm not so close right now. <laughs> uh, when we did our investigation, uh, I actually did go up there. And I did feel like I got touched on the top of my head, and I thought Will over there was uh, teasing me because he tends to do that a lot. Yeah, no, you weren't. Um, and I have had my sweatshirt tugged on in here the very first time we investigated in here. I remember I was wearing like a hoodie, and I remember it getting tugged on in here. So, yeah, I would say that this definitely is a nice little place. Little tricks they like to play on. Right. Should we go to the other area? Sure. Oh my goodness, I see some of your props. We'll uh, not show them so yeah. people who come in here can get scared. I particularly don't like those things. But <laughs> it definitely looks different when you guys have it set up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, this is the engine room. Um, people crawl up there a lot. People crawl up 
People don't yeah. really tend to like to be in here. Yeah. Especially up there. It makes me right. very uncomfortable. And obviously it's a strange structure, but everybody who's always acted in here has always had some form of issue. Um, they always hear noises. And it's really close actually to the end of the haunt. So right. other than just outside people talking, you shouldn't really be hearing much. But everybody tends to have a problem. Now, what was really funny is when we did investigate in here, I know, Will, you went up there. And uh, when you were up there, I was walking around and we heard a really weird sound. It almost sounded like a, yeah, it was the weirdest thing. And we couldn't figure out where it was coming from. It was so loud. And Will said it sounded like it came from up in that area. Yeah. Yeah. And now this thing does not turn on, oh, no. it does not work, no, no. so it would Although not made any of that noise. I'm afraid of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like to like, put my arm in anything because I'm just like really scared something's going to happen. Yeah. It's gonna... None <laughs> of the machines in the building like this work. Though. Right. Well, there was sometimes I would just be on this, this thing and it, it would, I mean, obviously it'd be like other actors and they'd be quiet because they were getting ready. But it would feel like there was like, in, there was like an echo coming from like, like you're saying, like a bear, like right. inside. Hey. I've heard it's about it, though, because it's like industrial. Yeah. <laughs> because you're a boy. <laughs> well, it's cool looking. It's just... It's just creepy. Because there's obviously... There's obviously... Sorry. I don't know. I'm all about, like, nursing crannies and stuff, and this hasn't been, like, so... Yeah. I like to explore that. But right. I personally haven't had to worry about anything coming from this, other than... Yeah, like I said, I know we were in here and Will was up there checking it out because the first time you didn't have the ladder down, right? Um, so he couldn't get up there. And so when he had it down, he's all, I'm going to go check it out. And he went up there and that weird noise came out of nowhere. And, you know, you guys had told us before that this has never worked. It's never turned on. So we knew it couldn't come from the machinery here. Kind of a creepy old place. Yeah. I mean, if you really think about it, there's a lot of history to it too. Right, because this came off of a ship, right? World War... I believe so, yeah. 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 World War II or yeah. something, I think it was. Mm -hmm. That's what Bobby told us. Yeah. 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 I can't imagine something this huge being on a ship. I just learned a new fact. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what Bobby told us when he gave us the tour, so. Yep. Yeah. That would be right then. Yeah. Yep, everything in here is original to the building, so none of it's ever worked for as long as we've been here. Right. It doesn't ever do anything. We'd love it if it did. It's kind of cool, <laughs> but. And if all of a sudden it would turn on one day, it would probably freak you all out, though. I think we'd all need to take it down, <laughs> to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't think <laughs> Sure, we can go outside because I know you guys have how many different haunts here? We have five different haunts. One of them is our interactive haunt, Apocalypse. Um, one of them is our interactive haunt, Apocalypse. We also have Boiler Room, which we're in right now. We have Cirque du Soleil, which is 3D clowns. Voodoo Bayou, which is outdoors. City Meets, which is our extreme haunt. And we also have a brand new axe house. Yeah, and we will definitely check that out. So those are the corrals that are original to the building. We've added a few scansion lines, obviously, but that's where all the cattle used to pass through. Like all the processing things. Basically, everything that was here, we didn't take it down; we just added to it. Right. So all of the facilities that were here when it wasn't the packing facility were still here. We had a lot of that like environment going on already. Right. Right. <laughs> 
Y'all like to come out here and just play on this, right? A lot of spiders. Now is that new? The mini escape rooms? Yeah, last year we had two of them. Um, they, were, they, were, they were mobile every night. We put the tape down, put them back up. Now they are stationary. They're going to sit right there. And there's three of them this year. All different themes. Okay. Uh, you tap a wand, you move on to the mix. Very similar to our full version of the escape house. Right. And uh, we've done that. That was really cool. I loved it. In. Right. Yeah, as soon as you guys opened that up, Tucson Ghost Society did come out. We did that. It was a lot of fun. That's the question we get asked a lot is, okay, first of all, the escape room inside Boiler Room. Is that where Post Malone was? And is it really haunted? <laughs> so, I've had people that have been in there in the escape room and they come out and they're like, okay, so which one of you came in and tapped me on the shoulder? Or, or which one of you was whispering over the speaker the whole time? Yeah. Or they'll say, like, I was in there and I felt somebody, like, push me, but nobody was near me. We can see it over the camera, and they're, like, freaking out. Ah. It's one of us. <laughs> so this is all new. This is all new in our merch store. Sorry, it's a little... Oh, look, look. I love that shirt. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a brand new merch store with all of our new items. We have things like candy and costumes and t-shirts and hats and backpacks and sunglasses and pillows and pillows and glitter pillows Ooh, i like the skull one we hold on we gotta check out the skull christmas ornaments, christmas ornaments come on <laughs> halloween is not just for october yeah you do not have this before no we have a lot of new inventory this year wow so cool stuff this year a lot of cool stuff. I'm going to have to come back and go shopping. <laughs> Will's like, great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I had to show her this part. And then we have Axe House, which is our new activity. Similar to darts, but you're actually throwing real live axes. And I think Annie's going to demonstrate for us. I, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Annie, you got to use this one. I'm Liam demonstrate. I have to use this one. Yeah. <laughs> As you can tell, it's, you definitely have to have a knack for it, but I've been told that once you've done it a couple of times, it gets pretty easy. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> and when did this open up? We opened up a couple weeks ago officially but we're doing things like competitions we have different games you can play you can rent a lane you can rent two lanes um come play with your friends it's a lot of fun or absolutely terrifying if you're like me <laughs> i've literally made three and that was after spending an hour trying to do it but people, <laughs> we have people who they, they practice and they get better and better and better and it's kind of like one of those things that it's like self gratification you have to get it You're right um so you guys can come down rent a lane during season uh we also have midway style axe throwing which is like you You're come so and you play for a prize if you get a what did I do? Size. oh how cool what am i gonna do now what did you guys use this for before just this used to be club carnage which we had a bar that we would use for special events as well as a stage. Oh, okay. So we took the stage down and we're rebuilding it outside with a concert venue type thing. Um, and this is our official merch store, axe throwing, and it'll be the headquarters of Escape House coming soon. Okay. And of course, you still have a creepy looking guy over here. Of course we do. There's one in the corner over there, too. They're all over. 
Yep. You have to have your creepiness in here still, right? Oh, like right there. <laughs> he helps us sell donuts every night. Really, he's very quiet. He's not a great salesman. I can imagine. <laughs> so it's pretty good. Yeah. Lots of new things happening. And we'll check out some of this merchandise. This is really cool. So, a lot of new things happening here. Oh, yeah. Always moving in here. I'm seeing, like, a couple things that I like, like this right here. Who does not like the Ouija board? Right. I'm pre-shopping for later. Oh, here's another scary dude. There he is. And you got skulls. Got to have the skulls. So is this always open when the haunts are open? When the haunts are open, it's always open. When Axe House is open, it's always available. Um, as soon as Skate House moves in here, it'll be open as well. Very so cool. we'll always be able to sell you any kind of merch you need. We also have a new thing this year with our lanyards. It's kind of like the Disney collectible pins. We have little pins that say different things that have different characters on them, but there's a limited supply. So it's kind of one of those collectible things that we're trying to start. So. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So when do you plan on moving the escape? As soon as we are done with our season, as soon as mm -hmm. Slaughter House is over, we will reopen Escape House the following weekend. So we're done Slaughter House November third, I believe. So that following weekend, Escape House will be open. Okay. So everyone will have to check all that yeah. stuff up and definitely come and um, if, if anyone wants to buy me a gift, here you go. <laughs> Christmas ideas. There we go. Yes, all your <laughs> yeah, very cool. Love it. When did you guys get this in? Uh, this was a couple weeks ago, right before we opened. We got all of our new merch in. Uh, Bobby's wife, Monica, she does all of our purchasing and works very hard making sure we have all of the coolest stuff. Yeah, well, you definitely got some cool stuff in here. That yeah. is for sure. I love it. Definitely love it. Yeah, we're getting the behind the scenes and see everything as they're working. Um, you know, Apocalypse over there. We have a brand new uh, menu at our concession stand this year. We have some awesome tacos, so... Oh, tacos. tacos. I, I think you won oh, well, over they're, people. They're A1 day one. <laughs> Her mother makes them the delicious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very cool. You guys want to go anywhere else? Uh, well, why don't we go back inside and hit that second floor? Because I know that's where we had some activity the last time we were in here was that second floor. Okay. And so for those just tuning in, you are watching Mysteries Explained instead of just listening to Mysteries Explained. Uh, there are going to be some changes coming and we will get to that a little bit later. Uh, but we are live on location at the Slaughterhouse in Tucson, Arizona. Will is here. He's just being really, really quiet tonight for some odd reason. I have nobody to interview and talk to. <laughs> we have all kinds of people here to interview. The workers. Yeah, but they do all the talking. <laughs> all right, so we are getting ready to head back into the slaughterhouse. Heading up the stairs. Oh, sure, we'll do the best last.
pitch black. So I yeah. Go in there and see if you feel anything as soon as until I turn the lights on. Oh, I don't mind. Okay. We've been in here before. Now none of the traction stuff's turned on, right? No, that, we don't have any moving props or anything. Oh, not on this floor. No. Oh, okay. Cool. I'll go ahead and turn the lights on. Okay. Now. It's so dark. You can't even see. Like you can't see anything in front of you. So now that the, all the hot lights are on, so on, so if you want to go this way. Okay, we will come this way. This is the original room that I first started in. This is the first ever room that I was ever in. Um, I'm not completely sure if it's true or not. I don't know if you can actually even see me. No, we can't really see if you want to get out here. But so this room is the shower room, which there are rumors and tales of a um, custodial lady being murdered in this room. I'm not too positive whether that's true or not, but I have seen uh, kind of a larger shadow of a woman walking around near this area. Um, she doesn't really like to do anything, she kind of stays out of our way. Um, I always get a lot of energy in here when I'm by myself. I don't know if, that, that, if that's her or not. Um, but it definitely creeped me out as I right. used to it. But, um, <laughs> so this is the shower room. And then we'll go ahead and go back this way. You, you usually don't feel too much. Um, but once you get into the kitchen area or the pond, these are these are the the names of the rooms that we're going to. Okay. Um, that's because that's how they're themed. So we can go this way. Thank you. Now I remember hearing about rumors about this elevator shaft. Yeah. So. The reason I got here in this room is because I've had uh, one of my actors, Karaya, been, uh, she was hit by a piece of wood um, that we all, we've always had this year. Right. So a piece of wood came flying up from the bottom. There's, a, there's the elevator shut, like elevator um, downstairs still, but then there's uh, like maybe two stories of chef to get all the way over this. So. Um, two by four, yay big, comes flying over this, hits her, and she has no idea. She's the only one in this room, um, and I always kind of hear things moving around in here, or voices coming from in there. Um, I really don't like being in this room by myself. I usually kind of speed walk through this room, um, especially when I get around here. Mm -hmm. Here, just since there's actor spots and stuff, I just feel like there's always somebody behind the, <laughs> that was just staring at me. Um, but then the kitchen area over here is just as creepy. This is one of our statics. <laughs> yeah, she's a little spooky. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so there's arms for some reason, but... Uh, <laughs> well, well, there's an arm. <laughs> but yeah, the, usually whenever I put an actor here and they have to be alone, they usually try to ask if, I, if they can trade rooms. They really don't like this area. Um, but by far, the room that gives me the heebie-jeebies the most is going to be uh, the room, which I, I like a lot. If they get the last little bit of energy before they have to go. Now, see, these mazes, when we come through, we always had to kind of just find our own way. <laughs> By myself. Um, I never, ever, ever go through the hang body room, which has the, the strobe light going, because I just feel like, because you see everything in frames. Mm -hmm. And so, whatever, there's that 
those split seconds of not being able to know exactly where I'm at, I don't know who's if someone's just gonna pop out or not. And so I strategically placed a static mannequin at the end of that. So as soon as they get past a certain point and they see um, the light come back on and they see it and they think it's a person, but. I, I was and looking at that. I thought that was a person. Yeah, I'm yeah, like the creepy, creepy guy over there. I, I, the yeah. The stink guy, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I'm being stared at. <laughs> And it's him doing that. You can't even see him. He's in the dark. But there, there is someone over there. <laughs> so this area over this, here, yeah, huh? This room, um, just hate, hate it by myself. This is the hanging body room. Yeah, I just hate going through it in general. Yeah, even I, if there's people here. Yeah, it's not so bad when I have hot lights on, but as soon as right. the lights go off, then. Oh, no, we got this. <laughs> yeah. So we have a nice little water feature now. Yeah, we we had that before, the <laughs> little water feature. So where does this go afterwards? All right, that's back. Um but the uh, first time I was I uh, it's the old um man lift that connects downstairs to the room. Okay. Yeah, that's the one that goes into the escape room. Yeah. If you guys are wondering what these are, these are just fire hoses that we cut in half. Right, to get you through. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely mazes that you guys go through. <laughs> They still get lost, huh? Yeah. And so at this point, they've already dropped their guns and they're going to leave. And we have a second. Oh, that's one of our residential black cats. Oh, Oh, oh so what are you pointing at? <laughs> one of the, the many. can't go in it but every Oops. time oh sorry that's okay every time we i uh, get near this i just feel especially at night i just yeah i like feel like something's gonna reach out <laughs> up through here. but i've always wanted to open this up and open it up like the actual door but you can see down into the top. So. yeah you kind of get that feeling that something's gonna reach out and touch you huh yeah <laughs> it's completely dark in there you can't see Well, you definitely have the spook factor here to begin with yeah. and then you add all the haunted stuff to it you know you guys doing all this stuff it definitely can get creepy yeah and up here one of my better views i think i have the best view here oh yeah so you can see everything and that we have all the old uh industrial equipment like the compressors and the old freezers and stuff like that on all the right. roof still up here which are deteriorating very rapidly, but All right. it just adds to the factor. I always wish I came here before this slaughterhouse so I could just it. Right. Oven, so. It definitely does. Now see, we've never been up here. No, we haven't. No, yeah. we haven't we been up here before. Yeah. yeah. Nice little hidden A. Well, if you want to take us back to uh, the elevator area, and uh, uh, that's upstairs, inside. yeah, because uh, I know we had an area in there that we had an experience, and uh, we'll take you to that area and see if you guys have ever had this happen. I 
<laughs> so there's just certain areas that you guys try to avoid. Low battery. Low battery, all right. I hear noises. <laughs> each other out. <laughs> no. We heard someone. <laughs> no. Did something happen? Talking about this zombie? Yes, yeah. that one right there. I don't know about your meter. There's a little cut through right next to it. Right. And I don't like body room, so I cut by it and I just turned the corner and saw a body and just. <laughs> so we're hearing a lot that you guys don't like this body room. I, I, I don't like it downstairs either. I just don't like when it. When I, when, when, I don't know about other people, when I go through it, I'm getting, I've seen a couple customers, but when I go through it, I go like this and I cover my face. I can't even look at the floor of the light because it just freaks me out. I don't know. I, in general, I just don't like the med area, but I just yeah. really don't like the hanging bodies in this. Room. I just, I, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, apparently, a lot of people don't like to go through this. The strobe light does uh, add, to it for sure. add to it for sure. Water puddle definitely. <laughs> Makes it feel like you're uh, walking through something. <laughs> Blood. Blood. <laughs> All right, and we're familiar with this being open. We lost the employees. Okay, so for those just tuning in, again, this is Mysteries Explained with Becky and Will. Yo. Uh, we're just doing a live YouTube for now because there are changes being made that we will announce um, after after we're done here uh, so just stay tuned while we finish up we're gonna take you to a couple more areas here at slaughterhouse uh, slaughterhouse was featured on the show ghost adventures we have investigated a couple times here at the slaughterhouse so uh, we're gonna take you to an area that we definitely had experiences so bear with us all right so I know personally will you said you were up here when we did the public ghost hunt because we've done the public ghost hunt before. Yeah. And when you were up here, you had the spirit box, what, right here? Or on the chair or somewhere in this area? It was sitting on the TV. And you okay. said that it came... It got knocked off. Yeah, it just, somebody completely knocked it off. So... So I don't blame them, it's annoying. It's annoying, yeah, we don't like using the spirit box. Um, there was that night. Yeah, and then I know, let's see if we can get to it, I think this way, right? Yeah, the room with the light. I want to know if you guys have experienced this. Uh, oh my goodness, that wasn't there when we did that. Is it, if it's dark, honey, I'm going to probably need your light. Okay. All right, so you had a different light bulb. Honey, can you turn on your flashlight? You definitely had a different light bulb in that. Yeah, I changed it. Okay. We did a walkthrough when we first started to take pictures for the book. And we came in this room... And I remember it being dark because you guys have these secret passages. And I came through and I was going through that to try to scare the two guys I was with. But of course, I wasn't quick enough or quiet enough to do that. So it's never going to happen. And it's never going to happen. You scare me all the time. Uh, but I remember walking by here and I don't remember it being very bright in here. 
because otherwise why would I try to sneak up and scare someone if it was bright, that wouldn't work. And then when we came up here to investigate, that light, which had the different light bulb, was on. And I know we checked with uh, everyone here, asking, did anyone turn on that light? You all told us no. Yeah. We cannot, and so we asked our team member, did anyone turn on that light? No one turned on that light, but it was on. Do you guys get stuff like that happen to where oh. you come through and things will turn on by themselves? Oh, yeah. Same thing with boiler room that happened a lot where like there was one area with um, a plug. They tested the plug and the plug was loud and they tested the light in the other sockets and it would turn on and then we take the light in and we plug it into the socket and it just won't work. So we have that type of stuff happening a lot. Yeah. So just either things getting turned on or turned off or... Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we eventually figure out, like, how things are getting turned off. We find a fix for it, but when it happens, it's, it's a little freaky. But, um... Yeah. See, I just... And we went through everything because it was driving me crazy trying to figure out, was that light on? But there's three of us that walked through it three of us could have sworn it was not on. But yet when we came up to investigate, it was on. And so we decided to sit right here at this lovely little table and do our EVP sessions. Mm -hmm. And that's when we heard footsteps up here. Do you guys hear stuff like that when you're up All here? The All the time, even when there's not people present? Yeah. It, usually I'm the only one up here before we open it and I always have to walk through and unlock all the doors and turn all the lights on and stuff like that. And I always just hear people and I, I always sometimes just, you know, hello or I never get anything back, but it happens too often. Yeah, you're kind of used to it by now? Yeah. Yeah, I know that shocked us because we were all three in here and our, the other team members were downstairs. They weren't, weren't even up here and clear as day, footsteps coming towards us. Um. Yeah, it happens a lot, especially this long hallway we have over here. It's a long hallway that leads past stuff, and um, walking down it all the time, I always find myself looking behind me just because it feels like I can hear someone or I feel someone walking behind me. It always freaks me out. Yeah. Now, we also heard voices up here. Mm -hmm. uh, I know when we took the public group up here, and we were coming up and I, I always say hello when I investigate, you know, I greet the spirits and I say hello. And shortly after I said hello, we had someone say hello back. Oh, man. And I looked at, you know, the people we had with us and I'm like, did any of you just say hello back? And they're like, they look so shocked. And they're like, no, <laughs> I think that freaked a couple people out that they all heard it too. That's so, cool. yeah, so that wasn't just me hearing it. There's a few people that heard that, and it was a clear hello. Yeah. So, cool. you guys get greeted sometimes? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Or, like I said, like, spirits just wanting themselves to be known by, like, touching you or messing with you in some way. That happens a lot. Like, a lot of kids will come in at the end of the day and just be like, I, like, something touched me, and there's nothing near me. I don't know what it was. And I'm just like, don't worry about it. It's fine. All right. Fine. Now, I know you guys have been, how long have you been working here? Um, I've been working here since I was like seven years old. Oh, really? Wow. That long, huh? Yeah. What about uh, you? I've only been here for, I say only, not that long, but five years is just Okay. Year. And uh, I've only been here for like two or three years. Okay. Uh, so when you guys get like new people that come in to help out, wh what do you have to tell them? <laughs> um, normally we don't really... We don't really talk about it because we're, we're like, we don't want to freak people out, especially because we have all the volunteers that come. Right. Um, we don't want to scare people away from coming because it's, it's a fun thing to like be involved in that. Um, but it's, we usually don't really talk about it. Some of our volunteers will talk about it, but we try not to. But if something happens to them, we usually will just try and be like, oh, it's okay. It happens a lot. I don't worry about it. So. Yeah, but it's always cool to hear like stories when people are like, something happened to me. Yeah, yeah there's something like that. Sounds like a voice. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear the cracking. It's so always like, it's coming from the back. You guys just, you, you hear these noises and I mean, you just. It's just a part of our day. Yeah. yeah. 
You, do you ever go to investigate what it is, or no. you don't want to know? No, normally no. you hear something like that, and you're like, okay, moving on. I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I, mean, yeah, I was here when I was younger, but yep. I, mean, I know you guys were, but I was here when I was younger, and if I heard something, like, I was a little kid, so, like, I ran towards it, and then when you're I ran towards towards it, it, I would run away <laughs> from running towards it, so, yeah, I have investigated when I was little, but, like, I don't do it anymore now because, I mean, it's like they said, like, just leave it alone. All right. Yeah. Now, do you oh, notice it gets more active the more I'm the? Like, I want to go. I keep hearing it. You keep hearing it. Yeah. Are you guys getting uncomfortable? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to move the interview to somewhere else? Yeah, I can go back then. Too. Okay. I actually just felt like someone was behind me. That's why I looked behind me. <laughs> so I take it you guys don't want whatever's up here to follow us downstairs then. <laughs> office and this is the one point where I'm talking about where like walking yeah. just feel like there's something behind you all the time. Especially because it doesn't it doesn't have an end like it, it goes right. forever. So where do you guys feel is the safest part of the building? Um it is, yeah the so the office that we started the interview in downstairs. Yeah. That we never have activity in there ever. And I think it's partially just because of how busy it is. Uh huh. Um, the only other place, like out in the yard, or like the club where we have the merchandise stuff, like never really happens out there either. Um, but like inside the building, it's So what was it that you guys were hearing that was freaking um, you guys out? <laughs> there was like a knocking noise coming. It was from like next knocking or ticking, I don't know. <laughs> and then on the wood and it just it kept happening and it, I kept hearing it get closer and closer. And I just I, I thought it was got, Annie I just was like, no. she usually does, like she does a little confidence. <laughs> well, I, was, I was like <laughs> looking at Annie well, I was like looking at Annie when she was like fucking her, I was just like then I looked at Liam and he's off. I just said, shh. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't acknowledge it, they don't keep going. I know. Keep going. So you're the one that works up there the most. Yeah. So you tend to just ignore it? Um, sometimes, but if, if I'm not too sure whether it's a spirit or a person, I'll acknowledge it. But if I know that it's just a spirit that I can be, they're exploring, but I just need to keep them. Now, is there a part of the building that you just refuse to be in by yourself? Any of you? Um, um I, the coming, like the strobe light body room uh -huh. that I had to go through, right? Been. Because I had to be on the phone with Kayla for me to make it to you because I was like, I can't walk through this by myself. I just can't do it. All right. What about you? Um, I just boiler room, um, the big, right. the main boiler room. I can't go in there. I'll ask someone to go in there. But it, and or even, you know, or sometimes my little brother just over there. Right. Right. How about you? Is there any section you don't want to go in by yourself? Just a bed lab. I just stay away from that, like the black plague. That's the place I was talking about. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Now, when you guys have to lock up at night, and if you are by yourself, how fast do you go through this building? You do it as fast and as efficiently as possible. Yeah. You use the body system. Yeah, most of the time, you grab someone and you're like, hey, go with me. But you guys feel fine in here. Yeah. Is this like your run-to spot when you're like upset? Is this like... Yeah. 
<laughs> Your safety zone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is about this specific room, but like, yeah. I've never had a weird experience here at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, this is usually where we have Command Central when we investigate, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Door, it shuts and locks. It shuts and locks. <laughs> now, have any of you ever experienced anything following you home? Um, one of one of our actors, uh, the door actor Caitlin, she has a lot, like more than anyone I've ever met, has a lot of paranormal activity happening to her. And it sincerely, like, there's times where it freaks me out knowing how much happens to her, and she. She has stuff following her home all the time. Like her, she just recently moved back to her parents' house, and her parents were like, "I swear to God, you have three ghosts following you," because when you come home, weird stuff just starts to happen. So I don't know if they necessarily came from here or what it is, but she she has a lot of ghosts following her. I know that. All right, I saw you get pointed at when I asked that. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess to follow home. Um, Mainly, it was probably when I was younger. Um, it was mainly because I was such a nice child, so it was like a dad's shot And I would get, I would, it would be like where it gets so uncomfortable, like where she would walk in the room and I'd be like, she knew there was something right there. So, uh, this is mom? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I hear you, you make some really good tacos. <laughs> 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 all right so the haunt is now open and it's normally thursday through sunday correct but this weekend is just friday and saturday we're open till 11. Uh, our full calendar is posted online at slaughterhousetucson.com but fridays through sundays till the end of october will be open halloween we also have blackout night which is where we turn off all the lights in all the haunts and we go through with a glow stick Ooh. I don't think I'm brave enough for that. Did you all agree with that? That yeah. the ghosts tend to come out more the closer to Halloween? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I definitely think that uh, we should try to come in right after Halloween then. Oh, you definitely should. <laughs> I think we will need to make arrangements for that. See uh, what little pranks they're up to. And that's what it seems to be. And, yeah. you know, whenever we've investigated, that's what we've always got the impression of is the pranks. So... So besides, of course, the haunted attractions, you also have the axe room now. Yes. And then you will be reopening your escape room or escape house after Halloween, right? November, let's see. November 26th, we're opening the escape room. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing the escape room after the Halloween. With our escape room okay that's the one that tucson ghost society did and i know that was a lot of fun so i encourage everyone to definitely do that one too yeah we we had fun in that one didn't we yeah it was really fun yeah um we have a pretty decent success rate but just as many failures so right. it's fun to do it either way yeah challenge yourself yeah it was definitely fun we really enjoyed it and then the Axe House, what kind of hours does that have? Um, Axe House, it's all booked online, so we don't do walk-ups right now. Uh, if you go to slaughterhousetucson.com, it shows you all of our hours. Right now we're doing 7 to 10 uh, for our two lanes that are available, and it's Monday through uh, Sunday. So every day of the week, you can go ahead and go up the lane if you'd like. And we'll... Okay, and then you, yeah. you got the new gift shop going okay. and all that wonderful we're, stuff. We're brand new all the way around. Yeah, it sounds so exciting. Yeah. All right, well, I want to thank you all for taking the time to talk to us. And uh, I think right now we should challenge 
all of you to do a ghost experience with us after your haunting season is done. And we'll bring in the equipment. I already, I already sat through it once. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be really fun. Yeah. We'll have to arrange it after Halloween. We'll bring in all of our equipment. And, you know, since they are very familiar with you guys, they may interact with you all a lot more than they do us. There you go. We're so, on. yeah, we will definitely do that. And then Mysteries Explained will have to record that. Thank you all so much. All right. All right. Whoa, as I destroy things now. All right. So we were live from the Slaughterhouse tonight. And you definitely want to check them out, SlaughterhouseTucson.com. Now, for some of those announcements, and honey, you need to be next to me. <laughs> um, I don't know. Are we coming back next week? Uh, that depends. What do we have going on? Uh, I don't know. I know we're out of town for a couple days, so I don't know if we'll be back next week or not, but what we are working on for Mysteries Explained is our own actual network now. You are no longer gonna find us on Voice Carry Network because Voice Carry Network went bye-bye. Uh, so we're going to start our own network. Uh, Tucson Ghost Company most likely is what it's going to be under. Mysteries Explained will still be shown, or yeah. not shown, but you'll still, still be able still to hear here. us. We will still be featured on iHeartRadio, Spotify, uh, YouTube too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So no changes to that. It's just going to be where you find us on Spreaker is going to change. And as soon as that goes in, we will let you all know for sure. Uh, oh, we need to mention that here at the Slaughterhouse, there is an event coming in May. And it is with Center Stage Events. And they are bringing Grant Wilson and Dana and Greg Newkirk. Traveling museum yeah the occult traveling museum uh grant was on ghost hunters um if you all watch us or listen to us you all know that i adore grant um lindsay's bringing them all here to town it's on may 3rd and 4th i want to say yes and friday night is the vip event and they only have two tickets left uh so that was limited to 12 people mm. it's down to only two people left so if you want that VIP tickets, you need to buy them now. You need to go to Center Stage is website to get them. And then Saturday night, it's more open. I'm not quite sure of how many she uh, sold on that one, so but uh, go get your tickets. Yeah, go get your tickets before they do sell out though. And that's in May of 2019, and that's going to be here at the Slaughterhouse. So it's going to be really interesting. You're going to have you know professional ghost hunters here doing their thing. And then we were also asked to promote mm -hmm. on Discovery Channel on October 7th. There is a four-part mini-series coming with Josh Gates. And it is going to have Grant Wilson, Amy Bruni, and Adam Berry, and Chip Coffee, And it's about crossing over. And it's a four-part series. The first of the four parts is on October 7th at 10 p.m. on Discovery Channel. So please go check that out. And uh, you can see Grant there, too. Right? All right. All right. And TucsonGhostTour.com. We have a ton of special events coming up for Halloween. And we're going to work it out with these fine people at the Slaughterhouse to uh, do an investigation after Halloween when activity is the highest and bring them along with us. I think that will be really awesome. So until the next time you see Mysteries Explained, Will, what do you want to say? See you around. See you around. He's been so quiet tonight. But until the next time we talk to you, remember you are never truly alone, and we will catch you later. Bye.